Hello everybody, Backyard Bullion here and we are at Shards Coin Bullion and I'm with Adam and Lawrence who are very generously giving up some of their time on a weekend to just have a chat with me about Shards and I think we've got a few other things like Raw Mint stuff to talk about too. We're just going to have a bit of a round table discussion. So without further ado, Adam, Lawrence, Hello. To you. what do you want to talk about? Well, I think, I mean, the, the biggest topic for me um, that you and I always talk about is the colour of sovereigns. Mm -hmm. and I think it's something you're, let's say, rather passionate about. And you've uh, inquired with the Mint over the years, haven't you? So. Okay, yeah, it's a current hobby horse for uh, a lot of reasons. Um, I've actually tested, using a night on XRF tester, a lot of coins over a long time. Uh, sovereigns in particular. And... What a lot of people pick up on is that modern sovereigns are not a very nice colour. They're copper coloured or sometimes called red gold, pink gold, rose gold, um, and they really should be yellow. If you look at any old sovereigns, they are yellow and not coppery. Um, ignoring the hammered sovereigns from 500 years ago, we've looked at, um, at probably every date of sovereign from 1817 to date and up to uh, well certainly all all the pre-Victorian sovereigns the Victorian ones Edward the Saddens, George V have all got a nice yellowish colour which is similar to the colour of, of actual gold yeah. and you'd expect a gold coin would look like gold wouldn't you? Well that's what a gold coin's all about is uh, it, yes. is it I, I've always understood that the gold look is because it was alloyed with silver and then the new pink look is because it's alloyed with copper. Is it's quite good. Um, from those tests, uh, and I haven't done um, a, a hard statistical analysis, but from the top of my head I can say that most old sovereigns have got about four parts per thousand of silver in them. Okay. They've obviously got 916.6 uh, parts per thousand or six recurring parts per thousand of gold yep. and the rest of it is mainly copper and some older coins you do get odd traces of, of other metals sometimes zinc, sometimes iron So just to clarify for all the people out there the XRF that you're, or the, what was it called? The an, an XRF, oh, the, the brand name is a Niton Niton XRF, that's a machine which will allow you to know the ma material composition of any given metal object that you put in there. Yes, it's so, quite a good, quick, non-destructive method. Hmm. Uh, they're not cheap, they're uh, no. one into five figures. Yeah. And they're often um, misused in our office, aren't they? Because you're yeah. constantly testing anything and everything. Uh, yeah, you shouldn't need to test things. If you if, if you see a fake of You shouldn't need to test things, Lawrence, but I've heard rumours that you've tested chocolate gold coins from of Christmas stockings. Do. Yeah, well, it's, um, it might sound silly and it might, be, might sound humorous, but um, if you want to check how good the, uh, the equipment is, testing random things like gold coins is, uh, is quite worthwhile. And that's actually, it, it, and that's chocolate gold, gold coins that's you're referring to. Coins, yeah. You pop a chocolate gold coin in, and the, uh, well, there's about, about 16,000 pounds, including that, for um, <laughs> a, an XLF tester, and that's a, a budget one, um, will give you results like your chocolate gold coin is 40% platinum. Right. You're thinking of buying the entire world's stock of Frankie. chocolate coins and melting them down and throwing them in the platinum market. Yep, I must admit, I, uh, I, when we produced our Chard mystery boxes, mm -hmm. I bought in some chocolate gold coins mm -hmm. and I had a big bag of them up in the office. Lawrence happened to stroll in one afternoon and uh, said, have we tested these? Went straight back downstairs and produced a test of the uh, chocolate gold coins and then came back, scurried back up to tell me the results. So it's not only our sovereigns that we test, we do yeah. tend to get a little bit carried away at times. Amazing. But I think we're gonna have a bit of a play with that machine in another video that we probably are. will yes. go out after this. I'm sorry for my viewership if it's gone out before, but we will play with some fake coins in due course. Yeah. The metal content of sovereigns, uh, yeah, historically uh, they have to be 22 karat gold. Yep. They are still 22 karat gold, which is good. But um, hundreds of years ago, way, way back say, in 1817, refining of gold and of silver and of copper wasn't as 
um, as, what can I say, accurate and as good as it is now. Um, for several reasons, the processes have improved. We've now got electrolytic refining of things. Before that, it was either chemical refining using things like mercury or melting down and throwing in all sorts of bits. Um, uh, by yard bullion, I'll know all about these. Well, silver, my, yeah, silver melting. my limited knowledge of melting silver. I mean, it, but it is, you know, the different hours melt at different temperatures mm. and different ways that they pour. It's quite fascinating. So I can only appreciate from history how it's all changed. But yeah, I mean, on the subject of Royal Mint, I know one of the hot topics we wanted to talk about today was a little bit about some of the Royal Mint's resurgence of popularity that's happened, I think is probably the polite way of saying oh, it okay. recently. I thought you were going to say quality control. And well, well, look, look, Adam we, talked about that we probably are going to have multiple segments of this fireside chat, I would think. But um, let's, talk, let's talk first, I think, about the volume of stuff that they're bringing out and how it's... Well, how you as a dealer, because what I want to know, what drivers want to know, is how it's changed for you as a dealer. Oh, well, the moment is certainly um, got that together in recent years on a few things, in that they've actually um, brought out um, quite interesting new coins, new coin designs, new coin themes, new kind of marketing. Um, mm -hmm. And there are some really good highlights, aren't there, over the past few uh, years in particular? There are. They produce some coins that are in huge demand, things like the Una and the Lion coins. Yep. Um, uh, and we completely missed out on that because... Uh, a lot of people did, Lawrence, to be honest, myself included. I, I thought it was a no-winner and I was wrong. Yeah. And as we know, the issue that, um, that, well, prices that are moderate compared with the aftermarket price, but what's happened is uh, most of the, the Unilion new issue coins have come up and they're now a huge factor of the original issue price. Uh, but that has been quite good for the Royal Mint, really, and that everybody wanted the next coin in the series, and it's keeping interest in those. It's good and bad because there's um, quite an active flipping market, rather like yeah. sagging shares. Yeah. And it's something it's, we've had a big chat about, isn't it? The, the yeah. flipping industry and... Is that good or is it bad? It really would be better if coins were going to people who want them for the aesthetics or because they collect, um, and not really because they perceive they're going to... Uh, m multiply in value by 10 or 100 times or whatever it is. I think most people collecting anything like that or buying anything don't want to buy something that's going to be worthless in a few years' time. Mm -hmm. um, but um, you don't necessarily have to expect it to double or quadruple in value the day after you bought it. Yeah. Um, so combining good design with good quality, and there's the odd question mark about that. Um, we'll, we'll touch with, on quality in a moment, let's do it. With fairly low mintages, um, has got to have been a good move. And of course, they've introduced some premium ranges now, so where you could buy a, say, a gold-proof crown, you can now buy a two-ounce gold coin. It's more exclusive, it's more expensive, mm -hmm. it's bigger, so you can see the design and appreciate it a little bit more. Um, there is a point about quality control, but then yeah. if, if, you, if you're going to have a business that's going to increase its sales hugely, then it's obviously going to stretch your production and your quality yeah. control. I think so you may have... It's understandable, but yeah. I think everybody wishes and hopes the moment will try harder on quality. Yeah. Well, before we move on to quality, I think your, your point there that I really want to emphasise is that I think if the Royal Mint continue to make great designs mm -hmm. with low mintages, that's exciting for collectors and stackers out there, that's such a great start. And hopefully they'll just continue with some of the great designs that have come out. But you're right though, quality. Let's open that can of worms because I'm, I'm a big fan of moaning about Royal Mint quality. Huh. And I would say before we move on, that the question is what it means for, for us as a dealer is actually quite interesting because we do try and get these coins for our customers. Mm -hmm. We try to offer them at fair prices for people that have missed out. And we do like to see them ourselves. Mm -hmm. um, but we don't necessarily, like we say, we missed out on the unit. But we've done pretty well so far, haven't we? We've managed to get the recent releases in. 
Yes, most of them. Yeah. Uh, and we actually, well, I get quite excited when, when I see either a new coin or a new to me coin, a coin I haven't seen before. And it can happen any time. Something can come, come in in a, a box of junk. It mm-hmm. might be an aluminium coin from 1920. Mm-hmm. Well, aluminium coins were quite new then. And if it's minty, I'll jump on it. Oh, let's have a photo of this and let's joke about it. It's probably worth a dollar, mm-hmm. catalogue first. Yep. But it doesn't matter. So if a new coin like a Yuna and the Lion Gold coin comes out, we want one, we want to have a look at one, we want to be able to photograph it. Yep. And in the case of the Yunas, we've only been able to, to see them fairly recently. When did they come out? Two years ago with the Yunas? Yeah, I can't remember exactly. It was before, before the pandemic, I think, from memory. But um, yeah. And we are going to see more and more from the series because the Great Engraver series is proving to be a very nice collection. I think we can all agree that there's probably going to be more Great and Gravis coins coming out. Uh, yeah. they, I think from what I understand, the, the William Wyan set, sort of set is now done hmm. and we'll be looking at probably another engraver in time. Yeah, but, hopefully. And of course, there's the, um, the, I don't know what the one they'd call it, the Great Monarch series. The British the Monarch, Monarch series, series. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. And um, I really liked the Henry the Seventh. The first one, Henry the Seventh, is a nice coin, it's a nice, it's a nice production of it. Yeah. Uh, good imagination to make it look a little bit like a hammered coin. Could we have done that on the old birth? I don't know. If I'm not mistaken, that's the one you had problems with, wasn't it? The Henry the Seventh. Adam, I have had problems with more Royal Mint coins lately than you've had hot dinners. It is actually quite, I think, unlucky to have that many. But yes, I had an issue with the with the silver version of the Henry, which hopefully will come back at some point. Mm, but good. so we look we are now 13 minutes in and i think if we start rambling about raw mint quality in today's video in this one okay we'll, we'll be here for another hour did you notice there's been um, a, a new Fifi council notice published in the last day or two i have to say lawrence i am not one that looks at the notes of the minutes of the privy council meetings on a regular basis well, we do when we get to see them uh, somebody posted it on a well-known forum uh-huh. called over forum and the next three coins are going to be James the First, George the First, and oh, who's the testing your memory now. Interestingly enough, I think the Royal Mint did release the schedule of when they were going to they release each they? coin. Yeah. Well, it's a so, twenty-one coin series, which is going to be five years, wasn't it? Five years, and you just know they're going to do a twenty-one coin completer set as well. Oh. With all the uh, with all twenty one monarchs on one coin, kilo gold version that will be quite good. It would be. It? Yeah. Maybe in five years I'll come back and see it. <laughs> but for right now, we'll wrap up this first part of this little fireside chat, and we'll come back in another part for I think a really interesting discussion about quality mm-hmm. because cool. that's I think yeah. that's something that people want to hear. But we'll devote a whole video to it. So thank you everybody for watching part one. We'll see you in part two. If you've enjoyed the video, hit that like button. Otherwise, we'll see you in the next.